Uh, hello, uh, my name is Sen Jia Wei. I'm in Austria with Jia Wei Shen. I'm an artist. Uh, here is uh, in my studio in Bangding Na. My name is Vivian Chan Shaw. I design women's fashion, especially hand loom knitwear and jewelry. This is my shop. My name is Lily Zhang. I work for the Transport Workers Union and I'm here today at the Trades Hall Library. I'm Helen Sham Ho. I'm the first Chinese born elected Member of Parliament in Australia. I'm here now at Sydney Chinatown. I'm the Honorary President of the Australia China Economic Trade and Cultural Association. Uh, I'm John Yu. I'm a paediatrician and I live in Sydney. My name is Wang Xu. Uh, I'm an artist. This is my art studio in Belmore. Hello, I'm Josh Kwongtart. We're here in the Capitol Theatre where I'm playing Scar in Disney's The Lion King. I'm also a great grandson of Mei Kwongtart. Uh, so I was born in uh, Tangshan province, um, which is in sorry, which is actually in Herbei province, and it's um, about two and a half hours east of Beijing, uh, so northern China. And um, my grandparents actually migrated here first um, back in the late seventies, and then. Um, they wanted my, my mother to come out with them, um, but by that time my mum had met my, my dad and um, decided not to. But a few years later, you know, after they got married and had me, decided um, to, to, to come out. So that's how we ended up in Australia. I was born in, in China in 1949 in Jiangsu province. Uh, there is a city called uh, Nantong, near Shanghai. I was born there. Uh, uh, during the Civil War. And uh, <coughs> two years old, I, I followed my parents, uh, went to Beijing, and I grew up in Beijing. And then I spent most of the time, you know, before I come here in Beijing. <coughs> Except, uh, you know, uh, some years uh, in working in the, in the, in the Mongolia uh, during the Cultural Revolution uh, to be the peasant. Uh, that is uh, when I was a student in the high school. In 1989, I came to Australia uh, in, in Sydney. Uh, I do portrait before in, in Dali Harbour a few years, and then I study art in Kofa, College of Art in New South Wales University, and got a degree there. And later, I was still working as a, a professional artist. I was born in Hong Kong. Um, my parents were in Shanghai uh, with a little uh, shop called Little Shirley. Uh, Shirley is my second name, and at that time Shirley Temple was a big star, so that's why that was called Little Shirley. Uh, they were on holidays in, in Hong Kong, and because uh, Hong Kong was a, a British colony, they thought it would be better that they had the birth there instead of somewhere else. So I was born in, in, in hospital in Hong Kong, went to Shanghai, but unfortunately the Japanese had taken control of Shanghai. The war in uh, uh, Australia, of course, was not even known until 1939, but in China it was 1937 that that all occurred. My mother and father were born here in Australia. Uh, Dad was born in uh, Surrey, uh, Surrey Hills, and my mother was born in Elizabeth Street. So we're very Sydney-centric. Um, I have a lot of family in China. Um, they came from uh, Guangdong province. Both grandparents came out in, in 1860. Uh, of course, the new gold mountain, you know, to find their fortune. Um, neither of them did that, but uh, one was a journalist and one went into market gardening. I was born in Hong Kong. I came to Australia in 1961 as a teenager. I came to Sydney 
d o m i n i College, a Catholic school at Five Dock. I did my high school there for two years, and then of course I went to university. Um, then of course I was selected in 1988 during the year of the Dragon as the first Chinese-born member of Parliament in Australia. I was very proud to be a Chinese member, seeing that no Chinese member was ever elected. Uh, my family came from China. Uh, all four of my grandparents are Cantonese, or came from just north of Guangzhou, though they were all Hakka. My grandfather on my mother's side came to Australia in the gold fields of 1867, and was at Ballarat for some period of time. He worked quite early in the piece. Uh, as a missionary to the Chinese on the gold fields, and shortly after was employed by the Presbyterian Church, and subsequently came to Sydney and started the Chinese Presbyterian Church in Sydney. My sister and I were born in China. We were born in Nanjing, and that was because my father was in the KMT, the Kuomintang, with Chiang Kai-shek, and Nanking was the capital of China at that time. We were there at the beginning of the Second World War, and when the Japanese were on the outskirts of the city, uh, we were smuggled out of Nanking with gun, I understand, with the cannon, cannons firing around us, and my sister, my mother and I were brought down to Hong Kong and then came on to Sydney by boat. So. I guess I was truly a refugee, and I was a boat person. And uh, perhaps that's a lesson that sometimes those of us who come in by irregular means may yet offer something to this our country. Okay, I came uh, to Australia as already 40, over 40. So before that time, I grew and studied and uh, working uh, worked in China. Mm, actually, I already been a professional artist uh, in my uh, late of twenties, and uh, I already uh, done a lot of history paintings in China. Uh, most of them kept in the national museums, national art museums, and other places. Uh, so I came here uh, for a language student to learn English half year. Uh, visa and uh, preparing to uh, afterwards I back to China because my business is quite well in that time. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the TM Square must happen, so I uh, only only choice is to live here. But I uh, soon after I realize uh, is a new opportunity for me. What I do know about my Chinese ancestry is uh, what I learned at a very young age from my father when he would tell stories. You know, Hans Christian Andersen, um, Ina Blyton, and also stories of a man called Kwong Tart. So um, I only found out later on that uh, it wasn't a, a, a fairy tale, the stories of Kwong Tart. It was in fact real life and he was in fact my great grandfather. There are some things about Chinese culture that I value. I certainly value the long history of civilization and culture, but I especially value the Chinese concept of loyalty and support for one's own family. I think it really is important that we look after each other. Now, it is, whilst it's a very strong point in China, uh, there is a slight variation of that as far as Australia is concerned which I value just as much. And that is the Australian sense of having some obligation to help others, even if they're not part of your family. And I think that's something that Australia can be very proud. And uh, I hope we will always care about other people. I think I value what, what people value um, in all cultures, so it's that sort of sense of 
being connected to a group of people, the, the history um, and of course the, the culture itself. In a lot of ways I was kind of almost resentful of being Chinese growing up in Australia whereas um, now it's something I, I value a lot more. Um, and it's partly because you know Australia has also changed you know, since the 80s in that time in terms of, of the acceptance but also the embracing of Chinese culture and especially Chinese food now. Like it was difficult to find a northern Chinese restaurant um, you know, 30 years ago but now they're all over the place. I very, very, very much appreciate the fact that Chinese have a very long and very dynamic, rich culture. The custom, the tradition is so vibrant. With the increased number of Chinese population in Australia, particularly in Sydney, New South Wales, I think uh, they have enriched the Australian culture as a whole. The fact that Australian society has now become multicultural, the culture itself have actually shared by many people. Like every Chinese New Year uh, time during January, February, during the Sydney festival, Sydney have this festival in January, and also the Australian Day on the 26th of January, uh, we all celebrate together. I think this promote understanding, promote harmony between people, whether Asian, Chinese, or Australian, although we look different, but we somehow are happy together. Firstly, uh, in Australia, I very much love uh, the freedom. Um, otherwise, I realize I have to get another freedom with the economic. If you can uh, survive from that situation, uh, you will be totally freedom to, to, your, to your work. Today, the people uh, talk about me, even the art critics, the, always a Chinese artist. <laughs> uh, uh, so I think I both, is uh, sometimes I'm a Chinese artist, sometimes I'm an Austrian artist. My Chinese heritage has influenced everything I do. My work is uh, entirely influenced, consciously or unconsciously by my heritage. China has uh, a very, very old uh, uh, civilization. So therefore, there's a, there's a lot that every Chinese somehow inherently understands. Um, filial piety, um, respect for the family, all those things. Uh, and also to try your very best. Whatever it is you do, you must try your very best and very, very hard work we're not afraid of. I am very agree with uh, the social um, value about uh, in Australia. You know, the um, freedom, democracy, and uh, uh, rule of law, you know. So I, this, all this uh, idea, I mean, I, I really appreciate. I don't know what it's like to have Chinese ancestry. I, I guess I, I just, I find myself in a position where I'm just lucky to have what I have, which is a knowledge that I belong to the Kuang Tart line. I'm in that line. And uh, I feel very privileged to have him in my life. I really do find a great sense of pride knowing that this magnificent man, I don't know how much to do with being, it has to do with being Chinese. I certainly know that he was Chinese and that in itself um, is something for me to be proud of. I think being Chinese here initially uh, was difficult because there weren't that many Chinese people here. My own experience was that people were very curious about Asian and Chinese and China. As time goes, uh, there were increasing number of Asian, uh, not only from China, of course, from Vietnam, Indochina, uh, Taiwan, Singapore, uh, Korean, Japan. And with the increasing, when there are more Asian, 
people become a little bit question, question, questioning, very inquisitive. At times, I think because of the influx so quickly in the last 20, 30 years, I actually feel sometimes it can be not only inquisitive, it can be hostile. I personally experience a little, not much, thank goodness, racism. I think it, it is everywhere. I don't think it's only in Australia, I think in everywhere. So, uh, however, I think the, 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 the Chinese people here are very adaptable, they're very flexible. And they are, I, I can say for myself, we are, not, we are more passive, pacifists and not a very aggressive group. So we just fit in and we just started to be integrating. I think that is the good part that being Chinese here, we showed our Chinese heritage that we are adapting and integrating into the Australian society. Newcomers generally, people from other countries, often when they're young, have difficulty in, I guess, recognising or acknowledging their roots. And that's understandable because they want to be Australian and we want them to be Australian. But I think it's a great pity when they don't acknowledge countries from where they've come, particularly the cultures from where they've come. Because if they understood the greatness of what those various cultures have achieved, whether that's China, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Scotland, uh, if you understand how great those places have been and what they've contributed to the world, I think it will help you feel better about yourself. And therefore, if anyone ever says anything about the origins of your family, you can hold your head high and say, yes, of course I'm Chinese. I really am proud of it. I came to here is the uh, first week of 1989. So my family came here to uh, the union is uh, about three years after, near the uh, before Christmas of 1991. So my daughter already two and a half. Uh, my wife also an artist. Uh, before came here already as a, t uh, as a teacher in the art academy for many years. And uh, we came here, my wife straight away uh, to do a cleaner job. Uh, at the same time, uh, she already found a gallery in Coventry Gallery in Paddington, so also had an exhibition there. Um, at that time, I still uh, joined the sketch for the tourists. Uh, so we, uh, I think uh, the Chinese also, probably most Chinese are very much safe for the money, um, very carefully to plan the money. My wife was especially very good planner. <laughs> so, so, um, uh, we save all the money uh, to uh, until uh, uh, about seven years after we bought the house in uh, in Bandina. I guess that the challenge was, uh, even though I was quite young, I didn't have any of the sort of language barriers or anything like that um, growing up. But um, I had the reverse, where you know my parents spoke uh, Chinese and communicated to me in Chinese, but my Chinese was also very limited, and um, in many ways it didn't progress to to that sort of very sort of early education type Chinese or Mandarin um, that I that I learnt to speak at. Um, at home, so now as an adult, trying to have an adult conversation with my uh, with my parents or with my family, that's quite a different. Um, it's quite a challenge, and I think in other ways, it's just you know when you. I just remember being at school. You do want to to fit in, um, and I think you want to fit in at at whatever whatever age. But for me, it just manifested itself in terms of um, wanting particular types of. Um, food in my lunchbox or clothing or you know all the usual stuff um, and not understanding why you know the why I couldn't get the a proper barbie but instead got a got a two dollar one from the two dollar shop <laughs> when its head broke off um, would break off quite easily so it's um, so in some ways you, it's kind of a it's it's just kind of understanding and I 
as you grow up, you kind of, um, I've definitely shifted. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think of it as much of, I don't think of it as a challenge anymore. It's more of a, that's actually a reflection of who I am. And in, in a lot of ways, it's instilled some great values on me. And it's one of the reasons why I chose to work um, for the labour movement because, you know, seeing my parents, the struggles, they very much just um, worked worked pretty hard in, in very blue collar jobs to make a living um, and made sure that not only were my brother and I um, didn't want for anything, but also their family um, or my family back in China weren't um, weren't in, in need of anything either so and when I think about it now it's kind of incredible because I think god they're on you know they're on, they worked on minimum wages all their lives and still do and have managed to not only um, <clears throat> buy you know buy a house raise um, raise my brother and myself and look after the, the whole extended family um, which you know would have involved a lot of self-sacrifice on their part but on mine it was something I didn't understand as a child it was always something in some ways I kind of resented like all that money being spent on on my these extended family that I had never met. I think the most uh, uh, the problem with the Chinese to become the Charles, uh, Australian is a uh, is, uh, language barrier uh, for me, I uh, I couldn't speak very good uh, English when I came here, though I have already learned some basic English in China. Uh, but still, you know, in practice, it's quite difficult to get into this society. Um, so sometimes I feel just uh, <clears throat> always in the margin of the society. I couldn't get into the circles, and uh, Aussie circle. Uh, I have uh, some friends that. Um, a lot of them is uh, artists from China, and uh, sometimes we, we get together and we communicate together. <coughs> the circle is always Chinese, most of the Chinese. So that that stopped me to, you know, spend more time to deal with the uh, Aussie and the Austrian or English speaking Australian. So when you know you you're talking to the the, the people in Australia, they um, sometimes you couldn't find the. Uh, uh, the common words, you know, you are interested in, in some sports. I, I, you know, in China we don't do it, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so that that this kind of things is uh, stop you to get into this circle. I think that's the most uh, uh, challenge for 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 Chinese Australian. There aren't any. There are no challenges, any opportunities.